something sad I'm going to share is that I feel that formal education, and I can only speak for the public school setting because that's the only setting that I've been in, stifles creativity in children. There's no room. Public schools are still on the industrial era of education, and we've been in the knowledge age for some decades now. And so we, as a public education setting, really need to look at doing an overhaul. All right, my man Kendall has a wonderful quote for us today. The making of a life should be emphasized infinitely more than the making of a living. What does this mean to you, buddy? I think for me, that means that we should focus more on the other elements of happiness. Um, the making of a living is more of just in the vocational, but we also have other facets of life like health, family, spiritual, societal, environmental. So we tend to penetrate all our energies into the money-making aspect of life. But the making of a life involves making a living. So it's all-encompassing. Got it. Got it. How does this manifest for you? I guess in my journey, um, I am 48 now. So about 10 years ago, um, to uh, just give a bit of an antidote here, I decided I wanted to retire at age 50. So I looked at, you know, my plan, the current plan I was on and said, how feasible is that? How, how feasible is that goal for me retiring in the next 10 to 12 years? And when I looked, not only did I discover that I wouldn't be able to retire by age 50, but I wouldn't be able to retire at all without active work. So I worked hard to put together a plan, and that plan was 100% financial in the beginning. Fast forward to today, that plan has very little to do with finance. And that was such an impactful lesson to me because I forgot about all of the other elements of life. But through my journey of self-improvement, I rediscovered that. And that's the significance that that quote has for me. Got it. So, you know, some feel good fathers, they're going to be looking at, you know, the fire, like financial independence, retire early, that kind yeah. of movement. Mm -hmm. And almost all of them, almost all of them, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> it's some sort of lifestyle yeah. thing they're doing. You know, right. they're, reducing their expenditures, right. living on the grid, setting up solar, mm -hmm. whatever it happens to be, some sort of investment <laughs> vehicle that's providing some sort of passive cash. Right. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And you're, and, and what, what's really important to you is that not only do you want to balance the, the financial aspect of life, but you also have what we would call something like a, like as Jesse Itzler calls the, the life resume, mm -hmm. sort of the, the complete picture. Yes. Got it. Got it. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, for Feel Good Fathers, you know, and okay. we'll, we'll get going. All right. Well, my name is Kendall Munson. I like to be referred to as Coach Munson because um, that's kind of the moniker I've been going by for professionally for the past oh, almost 25 years as an educator. Um, I teach elementary physical education. That's grades kindergarten through fifth in Memphis, Tennessee with the Memphis Shelby County School District. I am uh, planning to retire or pivot, if you will, more out of formal education, which is going into a brick and mortar space every day, delivering uh, my message. And I want to do that more in a non-formal kind of space, um, building a brand online currently, um, getting website up and Facebook group started and all that type of stuff to share my to share my message. And my main um, avatar is um, parents and teachers um, to young children. I feel that the life making, building, creating, designing process should start early in life. I don't, in my experience, it's always hitting a wall and then there's some type of answer. There's a whole industry built on that. Well, why not start instilling those principles in children? Not to necessarily say that they're going to grasp the concept, but at least they're familiar with it. And that is where my passion lies now in helping meaningful adults, i.e. parents 
and teachers become the best version of themselves through self-awareness. So they can in turn help those children become the best version of themselves. What are some of these principles that you're talking about that, that would be valuable to kids? Um, first and foremost, just self-awareness, just mm -hmm. you were uniquely created to do something that no one else on this planet can do. That's your life journey, finding out what that is. And then you could be of service to your fellow man. Most of us default to something and that mm -hmm. default, it could be based on rearing. It could be based on, you know, just circumstances in our lives, but we kind of stay in that default. And then we transmit that trauma onto the children that we serve. Mm -hmm. I was digging into some content and Alux is a channel that's on YouTube. And one of the statistics that they brought out was that 12% of teachers enjoy what they're doing. Yeah, that means 88% of teachers don't like what they're doing. And another statistic that they gave was 50% of them are not satisfied with where they are in life. So that's my number. I am a teacher. I'm a part of that. And I can attest to that was really the most gut-wrenching thing about it. Let me give you a little story. On Monday of this week, we were at school. And the forecast had some inclement weather um, in the form of like ice, snow, and Jay, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. When that type of thing happens here, it cripples the city. Like there's no movement, there's no nothing. My colleagues were ecstatic about the possibility of us being off, even though the ice is very dangerous. You could lose your heat. There were a ton of accidents the next morning after the precipitation fell. You have the threat of trees falling. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, people would rather almost die than come to work. That really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. That, that, I was stuck on that Monday of this week at work. I'm like, this is no way to exist because that's not living, that's just existing. And it was so sad to me. Like you would be hard pressed to find anyone in the building that was an adult that didn't wasn't elated about the fact that we could possibly be off for something that could be life threatening. I think it's I think it's an interesting statistic because it's so close to the regular statistics. Seventy five percent of all employees everywhere, according to Harvard Business Re Review, like don't like their job. Yeah, they're not fulfilled. They're unsatisfied. Right. They feel purposeless. Right. You know, I uh, there's tons of numbers here. You know, I think right. of. Uh, the base salary to uh, this, this statistic has been going around by USA facts. Okay. It's the average teacher in general, in most States, I think it's in all States except for two. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember, I think it's like, it's like Wyoming and one other state. Okay. Make less than not only less than the average for the state, but barely more than minimum wage. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, like, that's teachers, but right. it's this, this idea of, and I've always said, you know, and I'm a bit harsh on this, you know, for feel good fathers. It's like, if you don't like your job, if Monday is a drag, mm -hmm. go do something else. Right. There's so much opportunity. There's so much to do. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying cold Turkey. No, nobody's saying, no doubt. please don't do it job. without a plan. No, <laughs> yeah. it's like, look, you don't like what you, what you're doing. You don't like the people you're working with. You don't like your yeah. boss. There's two things. Number one, change your perspective. Learn what you can from everybody. That's the number one right. thing. If you're not coachable and you're not learning, you're not taking advantage of the opportunities in front of you. Yep. Number two, if it really is that bad, and I've been in some, I've worked for some really crazy stuff and mm -hmm. still managed to find some lessons. Right. If it really is that bad, you can find something else. It, it, it is possible. And I know the circumstances, all the arguments, everything like that, depending on how, like your social economic status, all that kind of jazz. Right. I know. I know it's not, I know that this is a, a nice, uh, I, a nice problem to have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the talking head in front of you saying, go get something else. But seriously, yes, like seriously consider what else is available to you. Um, what was the, what was the big thing? Oh yeah. It was, um, uh, regular places of work that had more seasonal workers. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I remember what it is now. 
uh, it's like assistant nurses. Like, uh, there's a, mm. there's a position. So the way the medical world is set up is that you have okay. doctors, assistant doctors, physicians, like in a, a whole line okay. then you have nursing staff. Mm -hmm. It's like registered nurse. And I'm going to get some of the titles wrong, but there's one down at the very bottom. And it's like the, the, the one at the bottom of the, the order, it's like registered assistant nurse something like our registered yeah. nurse assistant Then like it's a like, cna certified nurses assistant yeah it could be it, that could be yeah. it. it could be a certified okay. nurse's assistant they're usually earning like less than 10 bucks an hour right yeah and um they get treated like crap mm -hmm. they um it's grueling terrible work you know mm -hmm. it's 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 really tough and um they can stay home and answer calls and not and and not have to deal with it and so the medical world is having this huge issue where it's like, well, there's this desire because they've set up this structure mm -hmm. to create it where these, this position, the certified nurse's assistant mm -hmm. has to exist for the hospitals and the places to function, hmm. but they're at the bottom of the toting pole, they get treated right. like crap. And now there's competition that they mm. can do from home. Wow. And so on that idea of, look, man, if, if Monday is so bad, yeah, like do some research, spend some time. Um, it's worth it. It's worth your while, it is. especially it if is. you're a father, mm -hmm. make, if you're miserable, if you're miserable as a feel good father, your house is going to be, your spouse is going to be miserable. No doubt. If you and your spouse are miserable, your kids are going to be miserable. And then if everybody in the house is miserable, the house yeah. is miserable. It's a chain and reaction. Every house on the block is miserable. Right. The neighborhood's miserable. Right. If all the neighborhoods are miserable. The schools are miserable. If yeah. all the schools are miserable, mm -hmm. the county is miserable. If all the county, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, up to, oh, oh, look. And that's something country. I subscribe to, Jay. That micro approach that you just took, I think, is what our society needs to lean more toward. We can look at the macro of anything, and that causes so much speculation, but that's not my reality. Coach Munson's reality and Jay's reality are two different realities. And I love that you put it in a sense of micro. And that's what we need, need to lean more toward, you know, because if all the micros are good, then the macro can be amazing. That's right. You know, so um, absolutely love it. So we talked, so let's thank you for the segue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First lesson for the kids was self-awareness. What's, what's the second principle? Um, once you get that self-awareness and then, you know, we'll go Napoleon Hill with the definiteness of purpose. Okay. I know who I am. I know what value I provide. Now let's get definite about what it is we want to put out there to the world. You know, let, let's be real laser focused and specific about what that is. And as adults, we have to help children cultivate that. Um, something sad I'm going to share is that I feel that formal education, and I can only speak for the public school setting because that's the only setting that I've been in, stifles creativity in children. There's no room. Public schools are still on the industrial era of education, and we've been in the knowledge age for some decades now. And so we, as a public education setting, really need to look at doing an overhaul. Um, in my my new position that I have, I knew that I could in my stand. I can't, you know, do much about that. But transitioning, I can, you know, continue to be an advocate for children, while uh, at the same time working with the parents and still working with teachers as colleagues. Um, so I think us, you know, helping children with their definiteness of purpose is a, a, a great thing that's going to help us in turn, maybe discover or rediscover our purpose because a lot of times, as we stated earlier, defaulting to something, you know, we get away from our divine purpose. So young kids, elementary mm -hmm. school level, mm -hmm. their brain's not fully developed yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know there's challenges with time, like time doesn't really exist for young kids. Right. Um, sequence cause and effect doesn't really mm -hmm. kick in until later, usually middle school, high school years, I think mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And abstract thought is definitely something far more in the high school level. Wow. Um, purpose, mission, mm -hmm. those are very abstract. Right. So um, walk, 
how does it, how do we have this conversation? Feel good fathers, right? We, we've all got young kids at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, what kind of conversations can we have or what do, what do you suggest? What have you seen work to have this, these purposeful, like instilling purpose, explaining purpose, understanding these concepts to, to our young kids? I think that that conversation has to heavily evolve around creativity. They do understand that. They understand play. They understand make believe. Think about it, Jay. Mm -hmm. We spend all our years being adults to revert back to wanting to be children. We want to enjoy and play and laugh and, but you know, life is upon us. There are adult things that have to happen, mm -hmm. but we all want to just be carefree and, you know, having a space to be creative in, does give you that carefree because it's probably something that you enjoy. So if we continue to foster creativity in children, I think that lends itself heavily to purpose. How do we, how do we foster creativity? I think you just have to be cognizant and paying attention. Like if, if a kid enjoys a certain thing, you just have to go deep on them enjoying that thing, no matter how silly you think it is. Um, they enjoy it. So you're going to be as supportive as they can, not make them feel less than, not cast our shortcomings and try to live vicariously through them, the things that we didn't get to do. It's not your life. It's theirs. I don't care if they're six. It's still their life. You have to help guide them through that, but they have their own thing that they want to do with their life. They can't articulate or understand a lot of the things but you can and what you can do best is support them as best you can i was reflecting on the journey that my daughters take my eldest daughter and how uh, <laughs> she would have been four or five four five or six right in that okay. range and we went down to the city so we went out of new york city for uh, one of my dreams for the longest time was being at Rockefeller Center and seeing the tree, right? Okay. Just yeah. Seeing the huge tree and uh, been in New York for a while and just never really made the trip down. I was like, okay, lots of stuff was happening in that time in our life. And I was like, let's just, let's go down. And um, that was fun. Like the trip was great. Not, not the point of the story. We're mm -hmm. on our way back. And uh, now if you've done a day trip down to the city, like it's ex like exhaustion, like especially okay. with young kids, right? <laughs> like just exhaustion, pure exhaustion. We're on the train because we we're I'm in upstate New York, so you know two and a half three hours down, two and a half three hours back, like eight wow. o'clock. So we're not getting in with a four, five, or six year old. And I remember I was just I was thinking in my head and and my wife and we you know you had those telepathic moments back and forth where you're just like she's gonna melt down. It's like mm. she's gonna melt if we don't do something. And what we ended up doing was just we were singing Christmas carols and making okay. up new words. Oh. So we did like the 12 days of Christmas and just okay. did crazy stuff. Like, I don't know, like father got a wrench and a partridge and like, you know, just, you know, like and you exchange the words. Yeah. And um, I can't even remember the song now, but I, it's a good memory for me. And that verbal fluency, that playing with the words and creativity and just letting her run with it. Mm -hmm. I remember for years she was like, daddy, daddy, did you write down that, write down that song. Can we sing the song together? Mm -hmm. And now what's amazing from that, from that one moment, from that one moment of like literally where I was like, we have to survive for the next <laughs> two hours without this kid destroying and just drawing deep on that well that we all have of just like, okay, I'm going to go right into play. I'm going to go right into creativity and just make mm -hmm. sure we're having a good time. She now makes up songs. Right. She now plays with words she now writes she creates stories see she does that and this is like my first moment of realizing this it was like oh she's done this verbal play and mm -hmm. created this instance in her in herself and, and mm -hmm. she wants to do the standard american thing of being a youtuber and that kind of jazz but all of it yeah. is based on play it's all on verbal play right. so that's that's kind of interesting um okay purpose self-awareness what's number three um got it all together now you gotta set some goals you know you have to devise a plan um, 
How are you going to live out this purpose? Um, <clears throat> goals need strategy, though. So you can't just set the goals. You have to have a strategy for how you're going to, you know, bring those goals to life. Um, that's something that has just recently in the last couple of years come to the forefront for me. I've been good with the goal setting for a few years, but it's like, okay, that's cool. But what's the strategy around how you're actually going to attain the goal that you set for yourself? So as a teacher, mm -hmm. you're developing curriculum to bring, like, I would think of it as strategy. You're bringing somebody from let's say, I don't, I don't, okay. Well, when I was third grade, we did, we had basic math and then we went to early algebra. So right. I was in Canada, Toronto. So that was the curriculum for third grade. Mm -hmm. So there was a strategy to, in, to think about variables and math and some other things to execute. So, um, what, all right, elementary school kids, mm -hmm. what, how do we get them? And, and they don't really understand time yet. Right. So <laughs> what, who holds the strategy? Like what? How are we like, let's go. Like, how do we do this? Well, you can, and, and this all, all goes back to the interest of the child. Let's, let's take it to sports. So okay, if okay. your kid is in sports, you know that there are strategies. Yes. So you use that real world experience. Currently in my class, I'm teaching my kids tennis and we do a part whole progression. So we start with the ball, no net, no racket, know anything. Why? Because in the sport of tennis, ball control is the most important aspect. So if you are using just your hands and you're having difficulty controlling the ball, that means we need to work some more in that area. So we break it down into parts and then we get to the whole. So the strategies that you develop by having you and just the ball, you will now take into when you actually get to on-court play. So it, you, you have to relate that to something that the child has interest in, in the devising of strategies. And, and I think sports, cheer dance for girls, that type of thing. you be like, okay, you remember how you were trying to do the dismount? What did you do? How did your coach take you through that? You know, you don't even have to be that technical. It's just a casual conversation that you're having about what the child just did. I am reflecting a lot on right now, the, the movie, The Incredibles 2. Mm -hmm. And it's not Jack-Jack, it's, the, the, the fast kid, <laughs> the okay. fast kid. <laughs> right. He's having trouble with the homework. Mm -hmm. And then, and the early in the movie, the father gets upset and he's like, uh, I can't, I didn't learn how to do math this way. Right. And he's figuring out, he's kind of yeah. working at home. And then, right. and then he spends all night, just like he's staying up, I think with Jack, Jack and like figures stuff out and he studies the math thing. And then he's like, okay, we got time. We can figure this out. And so when you're describing this, uh, one of a, a feel good father, uh, one of our core principles is curiosity. Okay. Get curious, curious about yourself, get mm -hmm. curious about your spouse, get curious about your kids, get curious about the world. Like you approach, approach the world from a teachable perspective that everything that happens is the most interesting thing. If you're watching your kid and they have an interest, you can find activities that align with that interest. And that's what I heard you say. Yes. So the definitely. feel good father can say, ah, so the strategy the goal is saying like all right they have this kid understanding of what's happening right but we stay have in that vernacular understand. don't yeah. like the word creation game you came up with stay in that mode because yeah. you all had a parenting thing that you were trying to solve you couldn't say okay we don't want you to wreck this train so we're going like what what are you talking about i just don't want to be bored you know so you have to put it in their vernacular and it's something situational for them where they'll be able to appreciate what it is you're trying to get over to them i think it's and i think this is it's really funny this just just pulls back this concept of combining like we all want to get back to childlike and you mm -hmm. know i i don't necessarily I, I disagree with you i, I don't think i I don't want to get back to being a kid. However, mm -hmm. I, I want to let me qualify what I mean by that. Okay. Is that as I've gotten older, part of part of it is that I've been able to take on more responsibility. Mm -hmm. I can handle my dreams, my wife's dreams, mm -hmm. my kids' dreams. I can I, I help people build their dreams. Right. And I, I think 
that's a that's a parent thing. That's not a feel good father thing. That's just like mm-hmm. parents. Okay. That's a that's an adult thing. You become yeah. an adult and you become a part of a dream a dream maker for yourself, a dream maker for other folks. Right. And kids don't have that. And so I'm like, but I do get the lightness. I get the lightness of of being a child. I love that. Mm-hmm. And the childlike wonder. Well, you, I just want to push back on that a little bit. You know, you got into a spot that most adults don't get to, which is self-actualization. So if I'm not self-actualized, then no, I really don't. I'm I'm speaking more toward the middle. I'm speaking more toward the majority because a majority of people are not self-actualized. They can't see anything really outside of themselves. Let's, okay. This is great. So let's assume that also applies to feel good fathers. And there's a lot okay. of feel good fathers that aren't self actualized. Mm-hmm. Real, real quick though, mm-hmm. are there more steps in this helping kids be more creative, helping kids uh, get to their get to their dreams? We have the self awareness, purpose, mm-hmm. goals, strategy. Are there mm-hmm. more steps? Yeah. So um, we have the plan. You want me to go next step? Yeah, let's do that. Let's okay. So it. once you devise the plan. Now you have to make the plan happen, right? So you you have to dedicate time to achieving it. And time is a finite resource. So, and it's a resource that has to be used. You can't save it. You can't say, I'm going to save this time. No, um, we all have 24 hours in the day, but we don't all have the same 24 hours. Some of that time is I want to pause you real quick. Okay. Feel good, Father. Pay attention to what Kendall just said. If you need to rewind in the interview, do that. <laughs> pay attention to what he just said. That <laughs> has been this week. That's the most profound thing I've heard. Awesome. All right. All right. Keep going. That All right. Great. So, um, and most of the 24 hours is debited for if you really look at it. Like, you have to sleep. You have to eat. You have to groom. Okay, so that's going to be basic for everybody. If you work away from home, you have to commute, you know, so you have to make the best use of the available time that you have. The most profound thing that I have found, um, and I'll share this with your audience, is the odds and ends of time. You know, I'm a heavy YouTube university student, so I I don't care what I'm doing. I uh, I run through earbuds like crazy. I'm always listening to some audio books, some something, some type of substance. There is no such thing as downtime. Um, on my commute, had to listen to the radio in my car in about six years. You know, as always, some content for me to absorb. Any the odds and ends of time are so valuable. So, um, with us, you know having so many other responsibilities, you have to take advantage of the time that is available. And I suggest, you know, everyone do a time inventory. Just take your day, 24 hours, see how you spent it for a week. And then dissect that thing and just maneuver the time so you can get better management on it and you can make the the best use of it possible. Everybody's got, almost everybody, I think like the the through rate of a smartphone Mm -hmm. in the US, it's above 90%. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's like almost all working adults have some sort of smartphone. Right. So really feel good father. And especially feel good father. If you're listening to this, you got one. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, <laughs> that and library. All, yeah. All, all smartphones have some sort of note taking app. Yes. I know Apple's got a time thing you can flick on where it'll tell you where, where, where you're spending your time. Right. So yeah. It'll time. pop up from time to time. Yeah, yeah, how much so we'll screen time and all that. Yeah. Yeah. On Google phones, you've got Keep, you've got Google Docs, yeah. like tons of stuff to do. Uh, so you can always find some way to, to manage this for you. Okay. So we've got, all right. So now we've got dedicate time. Mm-hmm. Um, I absolutely love this. And I the, the, the statistic for me that brought up was, was this, because you were saying a lot of your time is already debited. Mm-hmm. So your working community and that kind of jazz. By the time you get home as a feel good father, right. you've got, one hour, maybe two with your kids. Yep. You know, if you're doing the regular nine to five, regular, what most people do, mm-hmm. that's the world. Your world is you get home and then by the time you get home, it's already like, and do everything else. You're going to be combining it with dinner and then it's wrap up for the nighttime. Yeah. So you've got like an hour or two. That's when 
you know, we've got to dig deep. We've got to make use of that time, leave the car and the commute, leave it all yep. outside the house and come in. And this is when we're serving. This is when right. we are outside of ourselves helping our kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else about do it? What else about execute? Like what else about make it happen? Okay. All right. Now you got to deploy your resources. So you yourself, uh, may not have all of the skill set. We just gave uh, something that could help remedy that. You know, you can go online and information is pretty much at our fingertips. Um, something else, another quote that I love, you are the sum total of the five people you spend most of your time with. Really dig deep into that network and see if they're lending themselves to your life plan. Um, every one of us should have our own life blueprint. So if those individuals aren't serving and not to say you dismiss your friends because you have some friends that you just want to kick back with and just do mindless things with. Um, so but know that they're not, you know, going to be major contributors and don't get emotional because they're not. That's something I suffer from. I wanted everybody to evolve because I had evolved and I'm like, no, nah, that's not fair. And when I came to that realization, it made, you know, my relationships easier. Um, of course, capital right, something resources. as well. Go ahead. Something else I just I just want to add here, just mm -hmm. one one little piece here on the five people. Those people can be, you know, uh, I do a lot of stoicism. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm hanging out with, you know, Marcus Aurelius and you yeah, know, and all, all those guys. Yeah, doing, like I'm I'm hanging out. Yeah, every once in a while, like those those are yeah. probably the five. Definitely, you know, yeah. I do. I do a lot of reading of the Bible. I'm hanging out yeah. with Jesus and Paul and, right. and Mark and Matthew and yeah. all those guys. Like I'm hanging out with them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Excellent so, addition. Yeah. Earl Nightingale, yeah. you know, we spent a lot of time together, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah. Benjamin Franklin, you know, I, I just totally believe in that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you've mm -hmm. got five people, you've got information is everywhere that the only thing I want to add here is that especially today mm -hmm. with the generative AI. So, Oh, what yeah. that means is that chat GPT, all it really means is this fire up an episode of Star Trek. Notice how in Star Trek, they say, computer, do the thing of a jiggy with the doohickey. Right. <laughs> that's what, that's what generative AI is. So yes. it's literally just a, a human computer interface that you can tell it to do something right. and it'll give you back an, an output. Yeah. So chat GPT, all the other, there's, I mean, mid journey, those are the big ones today. If you're mm -hmm. listening to this in a couple of years, there's going to be other ones. Please forgive me for it. Please yeah. forgive me for the term as the new things <laughs> come around. But the core idea is that we are now living in a world where it's that much easier. Google right. was a major increase in access to information from mm -hmm. the Dewey Decimal Encyclopedia library system. Mm -hmm. Now we've got AI where you just ask a good question. Actually, you right. ask a question and you get results. And yes. it can give you books. It can give you insight. It can, it can paraphrase things. It can... Yeah. How do how do I set up a, a how do I set up a fifty fifty financial budget? You can ask mm -hmm. it that, and it will tell you. Definitely. So time savings, right? That that net time. Okay, great. Five. What what else for deploying resources? Um, <clears throat> I think that's about it. Um, in a nutshell, with the deployment of resources, if you don't have, um, as I said at the top of this com topic of conversation, something in your skill set, you can always go out and attain that. Attain that and that doesn't necessarily always have to be via a formal education. Um, I'm heavy on the PE, the personal education. I think that is the most valuable asset that you can have. And also striving to be a lifelong learner. Um, as an educator, I always want to be learning and you can learn from anybody, Our children, babies, I, you can learn from anybody. And the people that you come in contact with, you should always seek to get a lesson from them. Mm. That's awesome. That's super good. And I think then, you know, if I was going to extrapolate to the logical conclusion of that, mm -hmm. it would be, hey, man, be a person where you can give a lesson to somebody else. Yes. You yes. Know, that's, that's one of the definitions of feel good for feel good fathers. Okay. Oh. Deploy. Yeah. Is there, uh, that's, a, that's five. Is there, All right. is there a six? Debrief. So, you know, you got all this going on throughout this process. You should be journaling. Um, okay. I have a manuscript um, that I wrote, the ABCs of making a life. And I have a letter of the alphabet that I feel is a good term for children to understand. And then I have the definition of the term, the syllable breakdown, how to pronounce the word, and then a journal prompt. 
of something that the, the child can write about. And that, that manuscript is not um, has not gone to production yet, but it will soon. Because I want to encourage writing, especially with us having digital children, take a pencil and put it to paper. It's, it does something to us psychologically. And I'm definitely a proponent for that, you know, that, you know, and with my adult version of my classroom, write things down. You know, the dullest pencil is better than the sharpest mind. So we can have them. We have thoughts going through our brain all day, <laughs> you know, yeah. and they're just running, 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 running. So, you know, I always kind of travel with, you know, a pencil, paper, a pen, something to write with, you know, so you can capture those great ideas. But in the, go ahead. Uh, what's so you got capturing the great ideas mm -hmm. we've got um a, a debrief we got the abcs but what do we want to capture in this debrief what what questions do we want to answer you really want to reflect on your process and this could be an annual or semi-annual review but you want to look at the plan that you devised earlier in the process and see how well that plan is working what do you need to adjust what do you need to change what do you need to add so you're just doing a review to track your progress Okay. Okay. What else? As a result of all of this, you will develop your life's playbook. Life's playbook. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Okay. Tell us about a life's playbook. What does it, what does it look like? What's its, what's its texture? All right. So it's just taking everything we just discussed and you're looking at that and you're, you're, you're carving out those good plays. Um, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan, and Andy Reid's an offensive man, so he has, like, the best offensive plays. So he has a book of plays that tend to dazzle, you know, even his colleagues. So you want a playbook that has dazzling plays in it. You know, you want to be well-versed in how you maneuver this landscape of the world. How do we – so back to the – question I've been asking with some of the earlier mm -hmm. steps, right? Is that, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to the deploy resources, debrief, right? Do it, do it kind of makes sense. You know, yeah. we started with how we're applying that to our kids. So mm -hmm. as a feel good father, right? How am I, how would I help? I know do it I get that, right? That's practice mm -hmm. and play, but like deploying resources, information, right? Like, my daughter wants to, she loves Minecraft videos, but she wants to be a YouTuber. She has mm -hmm. some other creative ideas. Really, she likes entertainment. She loves creating entertainment, doing skits, okay. telling stories. And so, um, and she happens to be older, so I can put her in front of some basic storytelling right. videos. I can show her like the Jungian method and I can show her some mm -hmm. other like, you know, the, the hero's journey and then all these other kind of elements there about how how to construct these things and create compelling dialogue and, and write hooks and, right. and, 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 uh, video editing techniques and stuff like that. So when we watch cartoons or we watch movies, I'm like, Oh, did you see they did this jump cut? Was that cool? Or mm -hmm. did you mm -hmm. like this filming technique? Did you like these things? So I can kind of give her language to start in the same way that when they're, uh, learning ballet or dance, or uh, I have daughters. So when they're learning yeah. ballet or <laughs> sports, right, they're learning plays and, and positions and, and football. I play football too. Okay. Um, that they have, they're developing a vernacular around everything right. they're, that they're right. learning about. Um, but what do we do for, I mean, but a six year old is not always going to do that. So is this like, how do, how do we navigate for our younger kids through the other, the other three parts? So deploying, debriefing, and then the playbook. Um, I, I think, and what you mentioned at the top of uh, your um, question was doing it because those mm -hmm. kids are in the model, right? So when I teach my kids, I always model. I sh I'm going to show you what success looks like. And then you're going to give me your version of success. I didn't say that this was the end all be all way that it has to look mm -hmm. because right. I teach movement education. Our bodies are designed differently. You know, my body's older, your body's younger. Some of you all are going to be able to execute this move way better than me. And then some of you all are going to need a little bit more practice to get to your success met metric. So the best thing we could do is lead by example. I know that, you know, you say you do it, but that's going to be the best thing for them because that's how they're learning at that age. 
Got it. Got it. Okay. Now back to the other question. So now mm -hmm. back, we were talking about self-actualization, you know, and we were hitting this point. I was like, okay. So, cause we were talking about how I love to be an adult, uh, right. a big, you know, one yeah. of my huge, like what I really love about mm -hmm. me is that like, I am strong and I am big and I can carry my family and I can mm -hmm. carry other people with me. Yeah. And that's like, and I know that's kind of like, and I'd language, even and with, like with, with you, Jay, and having a conversation with you, I level you up to transcending. I think you have mastered the self-actualization. Well, it's not a mastery type of thing, but you get what I'm saying. And you've evolved to transcending. Our goal, well, no, let me go ahead, let you go ahead with your question and then I'll chime back in. So the question would be, all right, so we have this point of uh, self-actualization. Mm -hmm transcendence, you know, mm -hmm. you have a couple of different tiers, right? Let's walk through here for, um, if you're not familiar, one of them is like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Right. So, mm -hmm. and I'll just start with the first one where it's like, look, right. Yeah, the first couple, you don't got food, you don't got shelter, like mm -hmm. figure it out. That's the first right. thing you got to figure out, especially if you're a father, you got kids, you got, you got a mama taking care of everything and, and you guys don't right. have food. You don't have, you don't have shelter. You got to figure that out. Like that's yeah. like goal number one. Don't worry about nothing else. Like right, right now it's, get the job, get the paycheck, get the food on the table, get the roof over the head, take care of the basic necessities. Everything else will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. um, in time, we got to heal from, and we got to heal from that wound. That's the thing too, is like, I've been there, I've been hungry. Yeah. We've had situations here, like mm -hmm. it takes time and it's okay. But right. as long as you keep going, it gets better. It does mm -hmm. get better. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So we've had those levels. Kendall, what, walk us through these this tiering structure this this framework mm -hmm. of I, i'll call it self-actualization you tell me what it is and then okay. we'll uh, for the feel good father we kind of want to understand what are what are these targets what do they mean for us and and what is it how does it manifest itself in our lives okay um one of the main drivers of this whole personal education model that i created was i feel that so many people get stuck at those two basic levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. Having food, clothing, shelter, security, which is provided via housing, transportation to get to work. Let's just stop there. One of the other statistics, this was in something else I was looking at on YouTube, was that People making above 100000 are having trouble paying their bills and have no savings. So the money is not the problem. You got $100,000. So. And just to, I, I love statistics. So mm -hmm. I want to add some data here. If you're making hundred k a year in the United States of America, you're in the top 30%. The top 30%. You're in the top 30%. So mm -hmm. that means that most of the country, and, and when we say the top 30%, we're talking about working. So we're talking about people that are working in the top 30%. So that means that most people out there that you meet and know in the world, they're earning less than you are. Right. Again, circumstances, habits, right. the whole deal. Yep. This is yep. not combination, just data. Right. By the numbers, <laughs> that's data. <laughs> yeah. But from my experience, most of the suffering that happens with people that make, you know, let's say middle class incomes mm -hmm. is self-inflicted. Bought too much house bought too much car, then calculate the phantom cost of either. So we get stuck on this treadmill of survival. Mm. That is disheartening to me. How can you be the best feel good father mm. if your mind is focused on maintaining? How are you gonna move from surviving to thriving? Jay, that's a personal question. I can't tell you how to do that. For me, it was discipline and sacrifice. That worked for me. I think discipline and sacrifice could work for everyone, but that's just one man's opinion. I think when we talk about, and we were back at the example of your debited day mm -hmm. and the time you have, right? A, a big, a big role we have as fathers, and and this can help you feel good if you're not if you haven't internalized this. A big piece of being a, a feel good father is you're sacrificing a little bit of this, you're sacrificing a little bit of yourself for the future. And that is personalized 
wow. in your children. Yes. And so sacrificing that hour, mm -hmm. sacrificing the game, sacrificing the video game, sacrificing the night out with the buds, not all the time, right? But on occasion, right? Right. Sacrifice, sacrificing the carefree single living, right? <laughs> to go home, to go home and be with your family and right. raise your kids. Mm -hmm. That takes discipline. It does. Okay. All right. So, so part of it is this discipline sacrifice. All right. So that's kind of like the lower end of Maslow. So now let's, right. let's kind of keep going. So what were the other tiers? Um, then you get into belonging, you know, being a part of a, of a group. Um, yep. and that is definitely, definitely important. Um, we all want a sense of belonging and once you kind of master those lower levels to some degree, because you don't have to have them completely mastered because they are, they're going to be instances of them that pop up no matter how well you have it planned out. But if you have a pretty good grasp on those, then you can focus on meaningful relationships, you know, more long term, impactful things outside of yourself. Now we're moving towards self actualization because you have some type of mastery around what you wanted your life to be like by design and not by default. When yeah. you kind of navigate away from the default, now you're moving more towards self-actualization because you had to be deliberate to say, I want this or these things. So in, in that process of getting there, those hurdles that you climb equip you with the muscles, you know, as you alluded to earlier, that you can put all of this on your back and not be weighed down or bent over. You're not considering that a burden. You're considering that a duty and a responsibility because you're self-actualized. It's not about me anymore. When you can look yourself in the mirror and uh, a Damon Dash quote I like, um, one of the co-founders of Rockefeller Record, on an interview he said, I'm hustling for my last name, not my first. When you start hustling for your last name, you have become a man. Turn your tassel. You've arrived. That's awesome. And uh, for all of the all the feel good fathers that are wherever you're at on the journey, know this: less than ten years ago, <laughs> uh, we were scraping by. Mm -hmm. We were uh, living in another state, and uh, the job had run out. Paycheck had run out. We were, we were one, one charge from being on the street, having to declare bankruptcy, no cash coming in. Yeah. And we've climbed from there to where we are today. Takes time. We it were does. talking about figure out the time to get the roof over your head, figure out the time to get the food problem yes. solved. Yeah. Can't think when you're hungry. Yeah. I know yeah. this is true. You cannot yeah. think when you're hungry. Yeah. So you're thinking about you're eating. At, sorry. You're thinking about eating. That's right. And that's about that's right. it. <laughs> yep, yep. So it's possible. It takes hard work. You can do it. And mm -hmm. um, if you're more statistics, so 25% of the world's population is, is at subsistence farming. So they're food insecure. That means that they have to find their food every day to eat. Mm -hmm. So that's 2 billion people, <sighs> give or take a couple hundred million just in general. The great thing is that most of those people are not in the US. Mm -hmm. So we have that piece. Most of those people are not in the industrialized nations, okay. right? So there's that, that kind of data. Um, a lot of them are overseas, mm -hmm. which is the thing. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a piece of data. But what that means here is that we have access and it can get better. Right. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't have our problems. Right. But uh, um, if we're lucky enough, to have that responsibility, if, you, if you're lucky enough to, if you're the feel good father and you're out there and you're lucky enough to have the creature comforts and the time to, um, to complain about what you see in the world and to be critical about the way things are going, that also means that you have the time to work towards and create solutions. Yes. You can always engage with politicians. You can always engage with your local community. You can, um, you have the capability of doing things. Definitely. And, uh, 
that would be, that would be sort of my final thing from this. Like, this is mind bogglingly cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> I agree. This is so great. Yeah. And one thing I want to just reiterate that you said, you said it was about 10 years and that's how long it's been for me. The world, the status quo American world has us set up. It's too many decades, 30 years to pay off a house, 40 years to retire. I like the 10 year look, look at things in one decade blocks and see how you evolve. That reflection period is just super critical and super empowering as you move forward. One of uh, another guest and go ahead and there'll be a card or a link here in the video. Uh, the Ben Green episode. This mm -hmm. is uh, how to how to optimize all aspects of fatherhood mm -hmm. uh, at the time of this recording. And um, one of the big things that uh, we talk about offline quite a little bit is that if you invest a nominal amount, say a hundred bucks a month into, and this is not financial advice, right? <laughs> if you invest a certain amount of income into a dividend account and you're in that position to do that mm -hmm. and you do that consistently for 10 years, your life will be fundamentally different in 10 years. Yes. We the 10 years are going to pass anyway. We completely underestimate, and I love this, where we're, where we're ending this one, is that we completely underestimate the impact of consistent, yeah. regular, boring. Dividend <laughs> account investing is boring. Yes. Boring, yes. dedicated action. Right. But lifting weights is the same thing, and your body yeah, changes. It is. Investing is the same way, and your, and your, your life changes. Yeah. You know, investing in yourself. So... Kendall, this has been fantastic. Thanks so much for everything. If right. folks want to get a hold of you, they want more of your teaching, they want to get involved, they want to learn about how to do this with the kids, they want to get involved in 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 uh, Coach Munson's PE. Where can they go? <laughs> uh, CoachMunson.com is under construction, but we should be live um, in about a month. So um, just kind of stay tuned, and that is where you can follow along, join the class, become a student, and Help us make the world a great place for our children. Coach Munson, everybody. Awesome. And oh, and and just so you know, right above my head, right about there. Okay. There's a video. This is the video okay. that YouTube has decided is the next one that you should listen to. And I'll tell you what, YouTube, it kind of knows what you like to listen to. So this is the one right here. Okay. Check it out. Check it out. All right. Thank you.